Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sometimes sports. And I'm really thrilled to have a guest with me. We're going to talk about uh, some of his uh, recent and upcoming work. I'm thrilled to be joined by actor and writer. You might have seen him in The Walking Dead. You might have seen him in Banshee. You might have seen him in... I'm a big horror movie guy, so you might have seen him in The Conjuring 2, Insidious. I am with Steve Coulter. Steve, welcome to Poptarnative. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Great. So, um, like I said, you know, you have done a lot of work in the past, have a lot of upcoming work coming up. Must be a crazy time for Steve Coulter right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now, I'm very relaxed, just sitting in my living room. I'm actually getting ready to pack. I'm going to New York uh, tomorrow morning for a film festival. Tribeca, correct? Tribeca film festival, yeah. Great. And... Uh, you have been like, like I said, you know, you're you're an actor. We've had a lot of actors on on the show, and I like when I have actors that, because um, you know, there are actors that specialize in television, and there are actors that specialize in film. But I've had actors like yourself that have done both, good amount of both, and um, it. Uh, do you sometimes find it, you know, hard to keep track of all the roles you played, and you know, when when stuff is coming out? That must be kind of hard as well. <laughs> It is odd because when you first start out, you have no trouble keeping track. <laughs> you have nothing, and and um, and it's not. What is odd is sometimes um, you know you'll audition for things, and they'll come in a, in a batch. Like you'll have three or four auditions in a week, and then you'll go you know a month of that one, and you'll get a call. Like I recently, I, I just did a TV series called Manifesto about the Unabomber, and I had auditioned for it. Gosh, I think it was back. I had auditioned for it in early December, and I didn't hear until about a month later, and I'd forgotten what the project was and what the role was, um, which is a nice problem. You And I guess you just slowly keep at it. Um, and I'd rather have the problem of losing a little bit of track of things versus, uh, you know, I remember starting out and I was like, I haven't done anything. <laughs> Because right now, I mean, you look at you look at your IMBD, you look at what you've done and what you have coming out. There's just a diverse amount of different genres, different themes. Mm -hmm. um, you're currently on the new IFC comedy, Brockmire, yes. which is uh, sports. Yes, and without wearing pants. Yes. Without pants. <laughs> I did not wear pants in one whole episode. And, uh, you know, I mean, sports, it's, it's huge. And the fact that, you know, you have a show like that, and it kind of it kind of makes me feel a little bit like it kind of has those Sandlot type yeah. vibes and a little bit of Bad News Bears, especially the remake with uh, Billy Bob Fortin. It reminds me of that a little bit. And uh, so that's one of the main things that you're, you know, because it just came out, right, the first season? Yeah, that's a lot of fun because I'm a huge baseball fan. Um, yeah. I actually went to a, a baseball game. Do you remember Jerry Park for the Expos? Of course, yeah. Because I was – this is – I won't tell the long story. I was a huge Joe Pepitone fan who was a uh, Yankee I, uh, near New York when I was a kid. And he got traded to the uh, – I think he was traded to the Cubs. And so and the Cubs were playing the Expos, and I drove up with my dad – uh, but yeah, I'm a huge baseball fan, so that was really fun. Even getting, you know, we shot in an old minor league baseball park, yep. and step out on the field, you feel eight years old again. Even though it's, you know, it's just a little. It was a tiny little old stadium in in middle Georgia, um, but you still get that feeling of like, because I, I think if I could trade being an actor with being a major league baseball player, I would do that in a second. So it's kind of fun. Well, when I read about Brock Meyer, I mean, two things came like came to mind. One. A sitcom, like a comedy series, like a half an hour comedy series, which is my, that's my wheelhouse. I love that. that that's okay. always been my favorite type of show. And then the sports red man and Hank Azaria, I was just like, I'm in, you know? Yeah, he's a huge sports fan. Huge sports fan. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, um, being so many different characters, um, and you've done a lot of horror, and I'm a big fan of horror. And I've seen all the Insidiouses. I've seen both Conjurings. It's so cool that you're in it. And in the Conjuring 2, you had a pretty significant role. You were the priest. 
I'm the I'm priest. I've played three priests now. <laughs> yeah. And, um, okay, now that you brought that up, which priest was your favorite out of the three? I tell you, well, I play because I, I always like doing The Conjuring because it's James Wan and he's, yeah. he's so cool. But I recently shot in, I guess it was in December, um, there's an Al Pacino film coming out. And I grew up just, you know, idolizing Al Pacino. And there's a role in it. He's, uh, he plays a cop that is uh, looking for a serial killer. And I'm his main suspect uh, at the beginning of the story. And I play a priest who's an ex-con. Um, so that was kind of my favorite because I got to go toe to toe, just me and Al Pacino. Mm -hmm. uh, and he wasn't as, you know, the, the Father Gordon in The Conjuring, he's just a really great guy. He's a good priest and stuff. Whereas this guy is a good priest, but he's got a really dark past. So that was kind of, uh, that was kind of, that was fun. So I think that's, that's my favorite priest and my, in my priest list. <laughs> <laughs> and um, a lot of people recognize you from, a show I don't know if a lot of people have heard of it or not. It's, it's a show called The Walking Dead. It's it's people are starting to watch. They're starting to watch it. Yeah, it's it's one of those you know. Um, and, and you play Reg Monroe, and just to be part of such a franchise like that's just I, like The Walking Dead is one of those like AMC has had many shows that mm -hmm. have just become like big brands by themselves. The Walking Dead, it's everywhere. It's in it's Great. amazing. Yeah, it's, and it's weird because it's, you know, uh, from being on the show, you get invited to these conventions like Cape and stuff, and you get to go, I've gone to London twice, and there's fans, yeah, there's, they warned me, they said, do you, have a, do you have a Twitter account? And I think at the time I did, but I think I had, you know, I never went on it, I think I had, you know, 12 followers or something, and they said, you better keep an eye on it. And it was interesting because the night after I first showed, you just get deluged and people from Germany and Brazil and all over. It's, it's, it is kind of amazing. That's this, this globally popular show, which is, it's fun. Cause I've been an actor for, you know, 25 years yeah. up to that point. And you do a lot of stuff. And then all of a sudden you do something like that and everyone sees the darn thing. And, and you were not, you were in a few episodes, right? It wasn't like yeah, the last half of the, the season. And once they got to Alexandria, which you haven't, yeah. seen, you haven't seen when they get there. Uh, oh. I'm so far behind, but you know we talked about <laughs> before we taped. Like, there's the, I know, like I know so many things that happen. It's the same thing with Game of Thrones. Like I don't watch Game of Thrones, but I feel like I could talk about Game of Thrones and you wouldn't even notice that I, I watched it because a lot of people. Well, on Facebook, and you know, it's uh, it's funny because yeah, you are our first Walking Dead guest. Oh, oh, but there's a few others in the works. So yeah. we hope uh, that that happens. But, um, like, yeah, we just had Charles Baker who was on Breaking Bad. Yeah. And I asked him. Yeah. Sure. yeah. It's it's unbelievable. And we talked to him about that. And he's in a, a little bit of a different situation to you because um, he's done a lot of acting. But he he's mainly known for Skinny Pete. So the typecasting yeah. concept fits more with him. Um when you, and, but you did, you know, for example, you did Banshee, and you had a pretty reoccurring role there. Were you ever worried about a little bit of, like, typecasting that would ever happen? Like, if one character just stuck with you? Not really, because one thing, it, it's the funny thing about Walking Dead is that it was kind of a, a blessing that I got to have a very nice role for just, you know, a fairly brief time, so I'm not going to get, you know, pigeonholed into that. And I also got to do a lot in a short amount of time, whereas I know I have friends on the show that they get an episode... And then they go like four episodes and then they're not on. Um, one thing I had to be a little careful with doing um, horror films because I'd done Conjuring 1 and 2 and the Insidious films. Um, and I didn't want to get, even though I love that genre, uh, I, I, you know, I just as an actor, you want to do a whole lot of different things. So I've, had to, I've been a little careful about steering away for a while from, from horror stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and also, plus, like, you just like to do a variety of roles, and I've been very, very grateful that I've got to do a lot of, you know, very different, di very different things. So I think it's in City is two or three, but there's one scene. Maybe you can help me with this. Where it, there's just a scene where there's just like a demon that just shows up at the window of a bedroom. Yes, I think that's the third, right? I'm trying to think. There's a lot of demons. <laughs> oh, so, well, the, the guy, he sort of walks by. 
There's just a scene where you just see someone's in bed resting. I think it would, might have been the ho a hospital scene or something. Yeah, yeah. And then you just turn the head and just out of nowhere, you just see someone. <laughs> and I remember holding my dog because I have a five pound working and I'm just watching it. And we're watching my family. And, you know, those movies, I'm telling you, I don't know if it's just those movies, just all three of them. I've had like the biggest jump scare from those movies that made me go like, ah. Well, you know, James Wan, and he directed the first two, what he, he's such a student of, of horror films and just movies in general. And he knows, he knows uh, what scares people. He also knows how, he knows how to, what you're expecting and to exceed that expectation and to build up tension. And he's, I, I watched, when I went to the, well, they had to sit and see when I did, what was it? Um, I had to do like a press, some press stuff and I hadn't seen, I think it was Insidious 2 yet. And so they sent me a screener so I could watch the film so I'd know what I was talking about. I was talking about. During the day, sort of like this. <laughs> I was going, was it, yeah, because you don't know what's going to jump out. Yeah, no, just the, yeah. just the jump scare. So that was my question, too. Do you ever, because you said you, you, get, you got scared when you were actually doing it. But does that happen more than people think? Like when you're filming a scene, because you're not seeing it, but just the concept that it's going to be like a really scary movie. The time we got never, sh well, one time we had a location where we shot in the basement of an old abandoned hospital. And that was genuinely scary because normally on a set when you're not shooting, you might wander around, go get a snack. But there, um, and there had actually been a murder in the basement of that hospital. A neighbor, uh, you know, I was standing around and the guy who lived in the neighborhood said, you know, there was a murder in the hospital. <laughs> Um, but a really scary thing that happened in terms of a jump scare, um, they do, after you shoot a film, you get called in months later when they're doing the sound editing uh, to do ADR, which is you re-record certain sounds. So they flew me out to L.A. and there was a scene where I'm reaching up, there's like an old the wedding dress of the, the woman in black. And film, you know, when we shot it, I'm just touching this dress and what happens in the script is I touch the dress and apparently uh, the character, he has these visions, horrific visions. And I just had to act that, pretend at the time. Wow. But when I went to the ADR session, you go in a room, and they, what they wanted to record was just sort of breathing and you're, <gasps> <gasps> that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm doing it, and I have a mic here in front of me, and there's a huge screen projecting the film in front of me. So the first time I saw it, I got to see what his visions are because by then the visions had been edited in and they're terrifying. And when I did it, they showed up and I went, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, we can't keep that. So that was absolute because I had no idea what I was actually seeing. And, uh, wow. It's been fun. See, that's why I started the show. I wanted kind of the behind the scenes stories, you know, yeah. that that's huge right now. And speaking of that, social media, Steve, is huge. Yeah. And you're on Twitter. You have over 10,000 followers on there. What was your, you, you talked about it a little bit, but um, from an actor's point of view, what do you think about social media? What do you, what do you like about it? What you don't like about it? Do you think it helps actors? Yeah, more than it doesn't, or I really like is you get to talk to the people that make your career, which is the fans. Mm -hmm. And with Walking Dead, it's a really and that's the the best thing, especially for Twitter, is it um, it really creates a community, and people are so kind. And you reach out to people like when I'm going to, for example, a convention in London, we connect via Twitter, and then I get to meet those people in person. And um, and it's just it does it's nice to be it's just nice to connect with people and people are genuinely like ninety nine percent really really nice. There was two only two instances actually it's one of my favorite tweets I ever got. Um, since you know my character uh, uh, does not survive the Walking Dead, mm -hmm. you know after the character died I got all these really just just hundreds and hundreds of really nice things. I'm really sorry you died. And one guy all he tweeted was. I'm glad you're dead. <laughs> and uh, that was actually my favorite tweet. Wow. Um, then also, uh, then the political side of stuff, which is um, since I someone found out, and actually Kelly a coin, and I got a similar tweet from the same guy. Um, he found out that you know we'd done this film with Robert De Niro for HBO, mm -hmm. and Robert De Niro had come out against Trump. And he sent us this really nasty, like, you pinko leftist pal of Robert De Niro. Which you just find kind of humorous, but overall, I think Twitter is great. The thing I don't like about Facebook is it—it's 
I, I still enjoy reaching out to people. But for actors, a lot of actors, it uh, it sort of opens up their a real vain side of them. And we all battle that. We battle our egos. Um, and it's hard because you want to, like when I'm on something, I will tell my sister uh, and my other sister. <laughs> and it's hard. It's not, in, it's not in your nature to go, hey, come look at me. Um, like I don't have a Facebook fan page. Um, uh, so that's a little awkward because you do want to promote stuff. Because I, I am very proud of certain work, and especially like this film I'm doing at Tribeca. It was not going to be a blockbuster film. It's a it's a beautiful little independent film, and that I want to promote to get people get it. Get it stuff. So it's a fine line because there is that little monster inside all of us, that hungry little ego that wants to go look at me, and mm -hmm. that's kind of scary. So somebody well, do it. What's funny too is I, I dabble a little bit in PR as, as a publicist, um, especially specializing like on like online digital content. And mm -hmm. the one thing I've noticed, Steve, is a lot of um, and you just kind of to your point about it being a smaller film. Well, there's a lot of smaller media out there, smaller podcasts that have a huge reach. Yeah, yeah. And it's the, the the landscape has totally changed and transformed where, you know, all these bloggers, all these podcasters that really associate with a network yeah. are creating and pumping out content that has a lot of followers and a lot of subscribers. Exactly. And that's, and that's another reason why, and also here to want to talk to you because it's like, I want to get, help get the word out. And also, because yeah, there's the big, huge podcasts and stuff, but there's all these really wonderful growing things that you want to give a hand to. And, um, and uh, yeah, because it does create these little communities and helps get the word out about stuff. And also people, people are in trouble. Like there's people, one of the great things about Twitter is people, someone's sick and is doing a you know, GoFundMe thing. And you can you know, get the word out to that and, and genuinely do a good thing. And, uh, which is, again, it sounds corny, but it creates a community yeah. that I think is great. And, uh, uh, no, that, that, that's what it is. And... Um... Getting back to what you were saying, um, well, you were mentioning, and Kelly O'Coin is in it as well, uh, The Wizard of Lies. Yeah. That's on, uh, that's May 20th, HBO. Yes. Yeah. Of Bernie Madoff. Um, saw the trailer. Looks powerful. Um, you have a role in that. Who? Uh, um, can you tell us a little bit about the character you play in it? Yeah, I, play, I play a real person. It's Martin London, who was, uh, he was kind of the family lawyer. He had been, he's also the father-in-law of uh, one of Bernie's sons. Okay. He helps, you know, iron out things and figure out things. He goes, well, I want, there's a spoiler of what, he plays a okay. big role in one big event. Um, and he also did sort of a famous uh, interview on CNN where he lashed out at Bernie Madoff uh, very, very, very directly. Um, mm -hmm. and it was, yeah, it was interesting. It's, it's odd playing real people. And it was a great, it was so much fun, if you can say that, fun to be a part of that story. Well, it's on my it's circled on my calendar. I'm gonna watch that like as soon as it comes up because I gotta I gotta support Steve and, and Kelly. <laughs> yes, and Kelly's great. He is a really great guy. He's really good. And he plays different characters in a lot of his shows as well. Same with you as well, right? I just find that blows my mind, the diversity. Like yeah. you might have an episode like he'll have an episode of the Americans that come out. Yeah. Where he plays a pastor. Yeah, and then the next day, Billions comes out. He plays the total opposite. Like he plays yeah. like a bad guy. Yeah, yeah, it's fun, and and that's one of the funnest things about being an actor because it's like you just get to step into the shoes of all kinds of of people. Especially, it's very fun to play bad guys. One thing that was fun about playing Reg on The Walking Dead is he was such a good guy. You know, he's not struggling with anything. He's just really kind, and that was uh, those kind of characters are kind of rare, where it's just someone who's a really nice guy. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's, it's tough too because, well, I mean, you played a nice guy in like the horror movies where you were the yeah, priest. That's true. That's true. That's true. I think you were the definition of a nice guy because you're trying to get these demons to not <laughs> haunt this family. Um, but uh, we're going to wrap up with Steve. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, this has been fantastic. Um, you know, so. Anything else you want to plug or talk about a little bit? Talk a little bit about that film that you're going to promote at the Tribeca Film yeah, Festival. It's a little. It's called Abundant Acreage Available. There's only five of us in the whole movie. It's a oh, wow. really sweet little. It's got Amy Ryan, Terry Kinney, uh, who you might have seen on uh, what's the, he's been on a bunch of billions as well. 
um, uh, Imran, Max Gale from uh, uh, Barney Miller fame is in it. Mm-hmm. And it's just about these, it's a brother and sister, and their father dies, and then these three strange brothers, and I'm one of the brothers, show up, to, and they want to claim the land. So the whole film's about the relationships and, and fighting over that, and what happened to that. Great. Well, Steve, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It was really and- happy to no, it was great. What, what's your and and for people who want to follow you on the social media, where can they follow you? Uh, Twitter, I am. I should know Coulter C O U L T E R twenty eight. Coulter twenty eight. Perfect. Well, you can do that. Well, thank you, uh, Steve. Wish you all the best. Thank you for everyone who watched this episode. You can watch previous episodes of our show on our YouTube page. You can also uh, listen to audio onlys on our SoundCloud and iTunes. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Popternative. Thank you all. We hope you enjoyed this interview. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.